I'm Lauren Green, and you're in the Strategy Room. Russia's deal with Iran to send Tehran an air defense missile system is facing fresh criticism from Israel. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told Russian President Vladimir Putin his decision will only increase Iran's aggression in the region and undermine security in the Middle East. Here with reaction are the Truman National Security Project, Job Henning, and the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, Ali Alfone. Welcome to you both. Thank you, Lauren. Good to be here. Thank you. All right, so Russia is going to sell the missiles to, to Iran. Putin saying that uh, Iran has made a good faith effort in, these, uh, in progress in these uh, nuclear talks. Do you buy that, or, Job, do you, what, what is behind Russia's deal with Iran? Well, well, look, uh, you know, it's important to remember Russia's been a, Russia's been a big uh, arms supplier to Iran since 1979, so this is not a new development. This is a sale uh, announced in 2007, postponed in 2010. The timing of lifting their unilateral uh, ban on this sale from Russia's point of view uh, is obviously uh, suspect when you think about it in the context of the framework uh, and the end deal that has to be reached in June 2015. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's probably appropriate to look at it as a way to embolden Iran, shield Iran, and uh, put them in a better position vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the P5 plus one group mm -hmm. uh, as they move towards a final agreement. And Ali, what do you say? I agree. Uh, President Putin in his uh, annual press conference said that he was going to reward Iran's good behavior. But in reality, he is going to encourage Iran to engage in bad behavior by arming in Iran with these sophisticated air defense system. After all, when the Islamic Republic is armed with this air defense system, what incentive do they have to actually live up to their promises in a deal which they may or may not agree to? Yes, you know what? And Job, is Moscow really trying to make a play for more influence? I mean, is this a giant game of the global game of Stratego or something like that? Well, surely. I mean, everything Putin does, I think, is designed to augment his influence vis-a-vis -vis, uh, other large global powers. I think in this particular instance, though, uh, it, it's probably that plus something a little more specific. I think, you know, while Russia's been a part of the P5 plus one negotiations since 2006, uh, they've always played on sort of both sides of that. Uh, they've always seen uh, their support for Iran as sort of central to keeping the Middle East in play. They like the fact that Iran and uh, the post-79 government in Iran has keep the U.S. sort of tied down there. I think they fear uh, a world where the U.S. is not going to be pinned down uh, mm -hmm. with Iran, uh, and they're a little worried about what that's going to look like as Iran and, and Saudi Arabia maybe move into a, a new uh, international or regional order there. You know, and Ali, how should Israel be responding to Russia's movement? And Israel is not very happy about this, and they've made that known, but how should they be responding to Russia's move? Israel tried very, very hard not to criticize Russia's aggression against Ukraine, and that, of course, called for a lot of criticism against Israel. And I am sure that the Israeli politicians and statesmen were hoping that Russia uh, would be more cooperative uh, when it comes to such things as armed deliveries to the Islamic Republic. Mm -hmm. However, we see that for Mr. Putin, the Cold War is really not over. It is just beginning, and he is going to oppose U.S. policy objectives all over the planet, and particularly when it comes to Iran. So I unfortunately think that the Israeli statesmen, they made a wrong move by not criticizing Russia's aggression against Ukraine. Uh, Job, could this really impact the arms deal, the nuclear talks, that, you know, the deal that's really going to be sealed in, uh, in six weeks or so? Well, well sure, certainly, I, th I think it very much uh, keeps everything in play. Um, and, and look, I think we have to be honest, uh, you know, we've got a framework for, for, for an agreement. Uh, it's not really been made public in a way that shows both parties or all, all parties have endorsed it uh, in any specific sort of way. Uh, this, is a, this is a long shot no matter what, getting to an agreement in July. Uh, I think probably Russia's win set here is to keep things out in play. Um, don't get to a final agreement too soon, but don't make people walk away from this process. That's exactly not what the U.S. wants, and it doesn't serve U.S. interests. It doesn't, I, I don't think it serves regional interests at all. Uh, but I think uh, Russia perceives it to, to, to serve its own interests right now. I think Ali's point about the Ukraine is, is, is a good one. I think that's kind of a wild card. We don't know exactly why uh, Israel held back from uh, it commentary on, uh, on, on Russia's uh, intervention in Ukraine. Um, whether they're serious about threatening to supply arms to mm -hmm. Ukraine now uh, or not, I don't know. Uh, but certainly that's uh, another dynamic in the overall equation. Okay. And, and Ali, I'm going to let you have the, right, the, the last word here. 
while right now Tehran is preparing to raise its price when it comes to making a nuclear deal with President Obama. So he's going to, to, to see a Tehran which, which is going to, to reopen some of the things which the U.S. hoped were, were, were finished. All right. I want to thank you very much, Job and Ali. Thank you very much. Check out foxnews.com for more on the latest from the Middle East. I'm Lauren Green, and thanks for watching.